Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, we will briefly look at uh, the uh, various aspects of uh, asymmetric uh, synthesis or asymmetric reactions that we uh, started in the last class. What I uh, introduced was uh, the importance of uh, optically active molecules or the chiral molecules uh, because of the uh, importance uh, in uh, our biological systems, the chiral drugs are, are important to obtain. In a similar fashion, I also mentioned that uh, some molecules could have a different order or different uh, uh, smell. Uh, so that also depends on the uh, enantiomer or the enantiomeric purity of the molecule. Then uh, we uh, saw how the uh, various aspects of asymmetric uh, uh, synthesis are needed to be uh, developed in order to get uh, chiral molecules uh, in a synthesis as I have uh, discussed that as soon as possible uh, the um, first possibility at the first possibility a chiral starting material should be available at uh, at the beginning of the synthesis so that the possibility of diastereo mixtures are is or reduced. And uh, then uh, we went further to see how the uh, three people got the Nobel Prize, the uh, William Knowles, uh, Ryoji Noyori and Sharpless, these are the people who shared the 2001 Nobel Prize in chemistry for their uh, work uh, in asymmetric synthesis. And uh, towards the end we started discussing Sharpless uh, based uh, uh, asymmetric epoxidation and uh, as I mentioned last time that these epoxides are very important because once we have uh, a very uh, pure epoxide uh, in this particular case uh, an example of this type was taken which was from the prochiral allylic alcohol. So as I mentioned that um, in the case of a Sharpless uh, based asymmetric epoxidation has to be done uh, from an aryl alcohol. It uh, is not possible to do this epoxidation of uh, an olefin of this kind, for example, of this kind which does not have an allylic alcohol function. So epoxidation of this cannot be done by the conditions developed by Sharpless. For that we will see later on there are other epoxidations, there are other as asymmetric epoxidation. For further time being we will look at uh, the how this uh, Sharpless uh, based uh, epoxidation of allylic alcohols to epoxy alcohols occurs. Uh, and we also uh, looked at it that we can uh, use a combination of reagents in which titanium isopropoxide is uh, used as a reagent then tertiary butyl hydroperoxide is used as another reagent. Then you have L uh, plus or, or D minus uh, tartarate uh, basically. It is a diethyl tartarate, it is an ester. So this is what is the most important aspect and of course we have to use molecular sieves which are 4 angstrom molecular sieves. And, uh, and some solvent like dichloromethane or, or such solvent. So this is the protocol which is uh, uh, used for the asymmetric epoxidation. All these things are required to be done and this reaction has to be done in a dry uh, medium in the sense that it should be moisture free. Now how this reaction is done? 
So, uh, if we have an allylic alcohol of uh, this type here, uh, where there are uh, four substituents on the uh, double bond, one of which is CH2OH. So, we are starting with a, a double bond like this and we are writing the allylic alcohol part like this. So, there is something called a mnemonic device or, or a device in which you can uh, predict the uh, possibility of uh, which side of the double bond the epoxide will form. Uh, so, uh, if uh, the allylic alcohol is kept on the piece of paper for example, we draw in such a fashion that the CH2OH is uh, on the lower side of the double bond and on the right, high, right hand side not like this. So, this is the way we have to orient on a, on a piece of paper the structure of the allylic alcohol that we are considering. So, this is how it is shown here. So, if we have an allylic alcohol with a double bond like this and OH with the proper appropriate substituents and if we orient it in such a fashion, then if we use L plus DET, then the epoxidation occurs from the lower side that is the alpha side. This is the alpha uh, oriented epoxide. That means the oxygen comes to the double bond from the alpha side or from the lower side. But if we take uh, uh, D minus diethyl tartarate, then the epoxidation takes place from the beta side and the, the product that is formed looks like this. So, these are basically the enantiomers of each other. If you look at the structure of L plus DET, this is what is the L plus DET and this is D minus DET. We, we can also write the same. This is the Fisher projection and this is of course the um, three dimensional structure like this. So, these are uh, obviously the enantiomers of each other and that is the reason why, why the products that are formed are uh, enantiomeric in the nature. So, what Sharpless uh, has actually carried out is is uh, the epoxidation uh, at uh, so minus 20 degrees and whichever diethyl tartarate that is taken, uh, it can give either of the two enantiomers as the major product. And this is what the mnemonic device uh, allows you to essentially predict the stereochemistry of the epoxy alcohol uh, before you actually carry out the reaction. That is a very, very important part of the asymmetric epoxidation developed by Sharpless. Now, the transition state which uh, defines the stereoselectivity of the resulting epoxy alcohol is something that we need to really look at it. If we uh, take say for example, if we look at the diethyl tartarate which I have shown it here and we can write it in, in this particular fashion the um, same molecule. And if we see that you have uh, uh, ester group as, as E written as E, then of course, we can write it that we have something like this. We have OH here and then we have an OH here and this is beta. So, the other epoxy ester part of the diethyl tartarate would have an ester like this. And this is exactly what is, what is shown here. And when this comes in contact with titanium isopropoxide, then uh, you have uh, four uh, of the uh, uh, groups attached to the titanium. And uh, then we can expect that two of the isopropoxy uh, moieties are lost when the, these two uh, hydroxy groups react with it. And of course, we can expect something like this to form where you have now titanium and you have an isopropoxide and you have isopropoxide here. It should be through the oxygen of course. 
So this is how it is shown in here. So we have the ester group the on the left hand side which is a beta and then this is the ester which is at the alpha side which is pointing below. So this is alpha and this is beta and uh, then of course you have the isopropoxide parts coming in here and the ester group and the uh, could have a chelation with the titanium. And uh, what is found is that the uh, species which is uh, a real catalyst is a dimeric in the nature. And therefore we can uh, have two of the similar molecules are aligned in this particular fashion and they will have kind of uh, chelation uh, something of uh, this kind. Uh, we have uh, uh, here chelation of this type taking place and the dimeric species can form which is what is shown here. Now uh, this is uh, the uh, first dimeric uh, species which is uh, uh, actually uh, there is enough evidence to, to, to see that such a dimeric species is present uh, during the reaction and actually it is this one which allows the reaction uh, to proceed. How does the reaction take place? Now what happens is that we have this dimeric species uh, to which the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide. Now tertiary butyl hydroperoxide as we can expect that you have here tertiary butyl group which is a large group and of course you have the corresponding uh, hydroperoxide uh, part. When this dimeric species in which this is a uh, 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 isopropoxide and this is also isopropoxide and uh, the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide as you can see it here that tertiary butyl hydroperoxide attaches from the equatorial side. Now this is the equatorial side and this is the axial side basically. As it is a bidentate ligand it is a bidentate ligand as you can see it here. So this is the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide part and this is the tertiary butyl group. So the one of the OR groups one of the isopropoxy group is replaced when the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide attaches from the equatorial side and replaces this particular uh, isopropoxide group off and gets attached and of course the uh, oxygen tertiary butyl bond is something that is very important uh, to look at it. So uh, when tertiary butyl hydroperoxide attaches from the equatorial side uh, it needs uh, uh, actually uh, more space because uh, tertiary butyl hydroperoxide is large in size and therefore it does not go to the actual side but it goes to the equatorial side and that is the reason why this uh, attachment of the uh, tertiary butyl hydroperoxide takes place uh, in such a way uh, to avoid the steric hindrance. Once that has attached uh, and then there is a possibility of um, attachment of the second oxygen either from the lower side or from the top side and that is where the tertiary butyl titanium tertiary butyl oxide titanium bond forms from the less hinder lower side that is alpha attack providing enantiophase phase selectivity. That means once the um, this particular bond is, is formed the, uh, the O tertiary butyl oxide bond here attaches from the lower side alpha side that is because this particular ester group is beta oriented. So this particular path does not come from the top but it comes from the alpha side and also of course we have uh, uh, this also being beta. So it comes uh, from the alpha side where only one of the esters here for example in the vicinity is alpha oriented. So this orientation of the titanium O tertiary butyl bond is very important. As you can see 
that the uh, only other possibility now is left for the allylic alcohol is to attach from the actual side. This is what is the actual side and uh, therefore the, uh, uh, the alcohol allylic alcohol part comes in in this particular fashion. And uh, uh, molecular sieves is used basically to remove water and isopropanol from the reaction mixture and thus the reaction is actually uh, catalytic because your the isopropanol sorry isopropanol and water are basically removed continuously by molecular sieves. So uh, once we have decided that the, um, the attachment of the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide uh, and the allylic alcohol uh, takes place in such a fashion that the, uh, the chirality or the absolute configuration or orientation of the L plus DET in this particular case uh, decides from which direction the uh, titanium O tertiary butyl bond is formed and accordingly the allylic alcohol comes from the opposite side. So once the uh, allylic alcohol has attached from the actual side as you can see now the epoxidation onto this double bond takes place from the lower side. That means the allylic alcohol part is on the top and the epoxide is uh, uh, here and from the bottom side the epoxidation is essentially taking place. If it takes place from the bottom side what do we get uh, is as you can see here that in the transition state the double bond is here which is what is here double bond which is what is shown here and the oxygen is here that attachment is allowing the uh, epoxidation to take place from the lower side. So if we orient in this fashion the parts where this uh, allylic alcohol is epoxide is coming from the lower side and that is how we are writing the epoxide like this. If we rotate it 180 degrees in this fashion then of course we get this particular product as epoxide. So if we look at the uh, starting material what we had was the starting material was like this and we got the product which is like this. So um, uh, it is very clear that when we take L plus DET then L plus DET allows the epoxidation to take place in such a fashion that if the allylic alcohol is uh, written in this way the mnemonic device allows the epoxidation to make the product or lead to the product which has such a orientation. So again once again I want to re-emphasize re that in the dimeric species the tertiary butyl group the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide attaches from the equatorial side and then uh, the uh, attachment of the tertiary butyl O bond occurs based on uh, the orientation of the ester group. In this case the ester group is beta and therefore the attachment takes place from the alpha side and this leads to the uh, attachment of the OH of the allylic alcohol from the top and then accordingly the uh, oxygen of the uh, tertiary butyl hydroperoxide is transferred to give the corresponding epoxidation from the alpha side. Exactly opposite of that happens in the case of uh, reactions dealing with uh, D minus DT. For example, uh, if we take the D minus DT, the D minus DT would look uh, something like this and uh, very clear that when uh, we have a dimeric species, this is the dimeric species from uh, uh, D minus uh, DET and uh, as you can see this is uh, pointing actually below, it is going below uh, alpha oriented but it is coming towards us below uh, whereas this is going up on the top exactly opposite of what it is here. And uh, then uh, what happens in such a situation as I have shown it here 
that the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide again comes from the equatorial side, but then because this particular group is alpha, so the attachment of the tertiary butyl O bond takes place from the top side, this is the beta side. And since it is coming from the beta side, the allylic alcohol attaches from the alpha side. So and then the uh, epoxidation takes place in, in this particular fashion uh, that um, uh, you have the epoxide uh, forming from the uh, uh, tertiary butyl oxy part and this is basically pointing above the double bond part. So you have O here and the epoxidation is taking place from the beta side. If it is taking place from the beta side and if this is how this part is here, this part is here, then epoxide takes place from the beta side, we can get the epoxy alcohol like this because this is the epoxide oxygen. Now if we uh, simply rotate it uh, uh, in, in, the, in this fashion, so we will, we will be, if we rotate it in this fashion as I have shown it here that we get the epoxy alcohol having this configuration. So again uh, the tertiary butyl O bond attaches to the titanium from beta side and allylic alcohol attaches from the bottom side that is alpha side thus epoxidation occurs from the beta phase. So uh, you can see how different they are uh, with each other exactly opposite we can also look at it in a slightly different way. Alternatively, we uh, look at L plus DET, this is the transition state, the right part of the transition state uh, when we did the L plus DET and uh, we can imagine that uh, it, uh, its mirror image would be D minus DET. So if we look at it this way, we can, uh, this is exactly the opposite of each other and if this gives a product like this, uh, as we discussed, this is the alpha side and uh, this is also alpha side but it is a mirror image. So we, we, can, uh, we can look at this as the, uh, as the product taking place for forming taking place whereas uh, in the case of L plus DET this is the product that is forming. If this is the product uh, which is what we, we, we looked at it last time, uh, last case and then uh, the rotation leads to the product here. On the other hand here, now we are looking at the mirror image and of course in the mirror image again the epoxidation is taking place from the lower side also. But now this is the product which is formed which is exactly opposite of this. They are basically mirror images of each other and now if we just turn out of the plane then we get this particular product. So this product and this product basically are enantiomers of each other and they conform to the mnemonic device that we have uh, um, looked at it in the beginning. So uh, this is another way of looking at the transition state uh, by simply considering the fact that L plus DET is a mirror resume of uh, D minus DET and therefore the transition state that we are uh, looking at it um, can also be the mirror image of each other when we take either L plus DET or D minus DET. So in both the ways we can see that the product that is formed is basically an enantiomer of each other. Now uh, this um, uh, something that we uh, looked at it last time and uh, that from the mnemonic device and now we can uh, very clearly understand that how does this mnemonic device allow the uh, alpha side attack when L plus DET is used and beta side attack when D minus DET is used. So we can uh, imagine uh, the orientation of the allylic alcohol uh, in such a way that when the double bond is written uh, on a piece of paper in a vertical fashion, the uh, uh, CH2OH group uh, should be oriented on the right hand lower side and then accordingly we can predict the absolute configuration of the uh, epoxy alcohol during this reaction. Now what is the, 
uh, further development in these uh, uh, reactions, uh, we can start the reaction uh, with uh, uh, a, uh, allylic alcohol which could be racemic. That means we need not start all the time uh, alcohol which is uh, like this, uh, but we can also have uh, a racemic molecule. So if we have uh, a racemic molecule where there is a um, particular um, R1 group attached and um, then uh, what happens is uh, out of the two uh, uh, enantiomers of the starting allylic alcohol, one of them reacts faster the, uh, towards the epoxidizing reagent and gets epoxidized uh, whereas the other one uh, does not react. Obviously if we leave the reaction for a very very long time then the reaction will give uh, epoxides uh, from both the uh, enantiomers of the starting allylic alcohol. That is the reason why this is called as kinetic resolution. That means one of the two enantiomers of the starting allylic alcohol uh, reacts faster. Now how does this reaction uh, happen and what, why is it so that when the R1 group is beta oriented the epoxidation takes place, when R1 is uh, alpha oriented epoxidation uh, is slow. Like if we look at the transition state with L plus DET here, so we can orient the, uh, the racemic, the asymmetric uh, center uh, of the allylic alcohol in these two fashions. That means for example, we have the uh, R1 group as a beta here and here we have R1 group as alpha. So if it is beta that means it is coming towards us. Uh, whereas uh, this particular part, entire part of the molecule is uh, this part here contain is all is all attached to this one and the hydrogen is going behind and to which this uh, ester group is now having some interaction. Obviously the, this ester group will have uh, less interaction with a small H compared to the interaction of the ester group with the R1 group. When R1 is alpha oriented that means it is going backside and it is facing the ester group we will have more steric hindrance. So it is H versus E, E is uh, ester uh, which is uh, offering less steric hindrance and therefore faster reaction and that is the reason why uh, this epoxide uh, has formed first and uh, then you have R1 versus ester which is sterically more hindered and it is therefore it is a slow reaction and this is how it leads to the kinetic resolution. Interestingly when this reaction is carried out uh, we can uh, get almost 100% uh, uh, optically pure epoxide and almost 100% pure optically active uh, uh, allylic alcohol which is uh, not epoxidized almost like 95, 98 percent enantiomeric excess that we can expect. So this is how the kinetic resolution occurs. So we will stop it at this particular stage today and then uh, next class we will see how the utility of these epoxy alcohols can be uh, done uh, in synthetic uh, transformations. Till then bye and thank you.